Hello, thank you for trying out one of our art workshops. The video you are watching will tell you a little bit about your featured artist, the holiday behind our theme, and then we'll demonstrate step-by-step -step instructions for your project. This is a beginner level workshop, but we encourage everyone participating to be as creative as possible. You can pause after each step or watch the video all the way to the end before beginning. The entire workshop should take less than two hours for both projects and can be broken into different sections if you need breaks. We encourage you to get comfortable with snacks, drinks, and music. We would love for you to share any updates, videos, or even suggestions of pictures of you working and creating. Tag Sampha at Sampha Love on Instagram, at Love Sampha on Twitter, or San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts on Facebook. Make sure you share your finished product and tag us to win a free workshop spot in the future. Sampha and Howard College are using this fun virtual workshop to get adults interested in continued education programming. We are hopeful to start in classes in studio next semester. These continued education classes include art and other lost skills such as canning, weaving, and more. Please follow Howard College to see what courses will be offered. Michelle Guavez was born in Silver City, New Mexico. Michelle has always identified as part Native American and part Hispanic. Comanche, Sioux, and Yaqui Indian on her mother's side, Spanish and Portuguese on her father's side. In the 1970s and 80s, Michelle's grandfather lived in a modest trailer in Arenas Valley, northeast of Silver City. Much of his time was spent in his workshop out back. Up until the age of six, Michelle spent long hours with her grandfather dreaming up her own creations while he crafted custom lamps. We were always making something. I was always putting something together with him. Today, in keeping with the tradition, Michelle creates her own works at her home studio workshop in San Angelo. Michelle's current artworks incorporate Aztec designs with other period influences, including mandala, talavera, and the more contemporary Zentangle patterns. I have kind of blended them all together and created my own thing, from festive, hand-painted plates, stemless wine glasses, and Mad Hatter-like triangular cups, to tall, box-shaped vessels alive with color. Michelle is finding her own voice in the traditional art world. Now, another new chapter has opened. After a chance meeting with a gallery owner in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Michelle has begun creating elaborate nichos. We call them shrines, Michelle explains. It's basically a clock turned around with characters inside. Note, in Mexico, a nicho box is used as a portable shrine to honor an important figure or loved one. With the growing demand, Michelle's work once again has come full circle, inspired by the rich folk culture traditions of Mexico. Today, Michelle will be working to help inspire you to create your own Dia de los Muertos Nietzsche, a remembrance altar for you to enjoy in your own home. She will be demoing techniques, making suggestions to supplies and ideas from an artist's perspective, but mostly she will be encouraging you to learn and have fun making art. Day of the Dead combines the ancient Aztec custom of celebrating ancestors with All Souls Day, a holiday that Spanish invaders brought to Mexico starting in the early 1500s. The holiday, which is celebrated mostly in Mexico on November 1st and 2nd, is like a family reunion, except dead ancestors are the guests of honor. Day of the Dead is a joyful time that helps people remember the deceased and celebrate their memory. First, people set up a candlelit altar in their homes so spirits can find their way back to their relatives. The altar also offers some of the favorite foods of the deceased, just in case they get hungry. Items that were important to the ancestors when they were alive, such as a favorite book or musical instrument, are placed on the altar as well. Then it's off to the graveyard for a big party. Families bring a huge feast to eat while they clean tombstones, sing songs, and talk to their ancestors. And don't forget the skeletons. During Day of the Dead, life-size paper mache skeletons and miniature plastic or clay skeletons are everywhere. Why? Mexicans honor their ancestors on Day of the Dead, but they're also reminding themselves that death is just a part of life. Hanging out with skeletons reminds people that one day they will be skeletons, but not for a very long time. The skeletons are posed doing all sorts of wacky things such as playing guitar, taking a bath, or making tortillas. Apparently people aren't the only ones who get to have fun on Day of the Dead. What does Day of the Dead mean to me? Um, I think it's a, to me it's just like a very fun, positive celebration you know it's nothing to be sad about um 
it's sad because your loved ones aren't with you at the moment, but at the same time, it gives you reason to celebrate them and to remember them. Um, I know with my grandmother and my grandfather, um, I keep their altar up year round, but when Day of the Dead comes, it swings back around, um, I like to make it a little bit more special, you know, um, I put a Pepsi, a can of Pepsi for my grandfather and chocolate for my grandmother because those were their two favorites. I love it because it's also, it's just like a beautiful fiesta and it's full of color and you know the butterflies uh, migrating the monarchs and when I see a monarch in my yard, you know, because I have a uh, lantana of flowers, um, I like to think that it's either my grandfather or my grandmother. Uh, we miscarried a baby uh, about 10 years ago, so I like to think it's my little memo. Um, you know, just coming to say hello, you know, and I, that makes me feel closer to them at that time of year. I, you know, I, I like that I, I still feel them. I feel their presence, you know, I feel them closer. I feel them guiding me, you know, um, just a little bit more on that day because it's just, it feels like maybe like a particular veil has dropped for the day and they come in and they are just kind of hanging out with you. And that makes me feel very comforted on that day. So that's what Day of the Dead means to me. These are my little shrines, and I will tell you that um, I had always had intentions to do these right when I first started doing clay. I just wasn't quite sure how I was going to do them, and then um, they were they were on the radar for sure. And about mm, three or four years ago, oh, probably three years ago now, uh, I ended up acquiring this really cool gallery and got encouraged by a friend of mine to go talk to Johnny Salas at Santissima in Albuquerque. And so I went and talked to him and showed him some work and he was the nicest, kindest person ever. I mean, just immediately, just warm, just unlike any other gallery owner I've ever met before. It was like going through my mind, like, well, what am I going to make? Because I, I don't want to really take him dishes because that would conflict with the other gallery. And I thought, well, let's do these shrines. We'll see what happens. So I put it together and it came out really great and I took it to him and he loved it. And before we got back on the road, took him that work and took him a bunch of other stuff. And we got back on the road and before we could even get to Roswell, he calls me and says, hey, those two shrines sold, make me some more and made some more. And for like a full summer, we were going back from June until December, we were going making trips to Albuquerque. So anyways, so that's what the, that's how those came about. And so since then, they've evolved. So these little paint uh, pots, they will really go a long way. Um, just be careful when you open them. But uh, what I did, and if you have a flat that works, um, any of these work as well. Um, but what I did is just get a little bit of water in there. Make sure your water's clean. <laughs> Mine's not. And it doesn't take a whole lot to put the paint in there and you'll just and it dries pretty quick so you'll just flow it in there just like so and as you can see I did not clean my water so I'm getting a little bit green that's okay and so you'll just paint it all and if you dip your paintbrush in the in the um, water and then into the um little paint pot it actually goes a lot a little bit further and it still saturates really really well um to paint the back side of that one I used about maybe a quarter of it so these paint this paint will go a long ways with your little shrine then and then this is the other one that i used and you'll just get a little bit of water and then you'll just flow it just like so and you don't have to do it exactly as i'm doing it and you can use whatever color you want um, I usually like to, these are some of my favorite colors though. They're more, fest, they're festive and they're usually orange, yellow, and purple seem to be the color to use. It's got the more festive look. And what I did is I just kind of went in the corners and whenever I do my shrines, I usually paint the backside, even if I know there's going to be a photo hanging out in the back, um, just because 
it just kind of adds to it, you know, like the ones that are hanging in the museum. Um, I kind of debated on whether or not to do those, to paint the backside of the shrine or just leave it solid. But I'm glad I did because I messed up printing out my grandparents' photos and it worked really well to have these really cool designs at the top and the bottom to kind of help pull it all together. So, you know, it's just one of those little tricks. Okay, so to do these little toll painting little things, you're just gonna take the tip of your brush and just push down and go like that, down like this. All right, so um, you will paint the inside and you can do the sides if you want to. Um, I will give you one really cool option to do. Um, let's see, what color do I wanna use? Let's use this one. So, um, you don't necessarily have to wait for it to dry. These blend pretty nicely. Um, you can see I kind of just got a little bit of water and kind of, so it'll flow a little bit better. Um, you know, and you want it to flow and you want to make sure you have plenty of paint for the other side. So you don't want to make it too super solid. And this wood absorbs it pretty well. So you're going to get easy coverage. And make sure you close them because the last thing you need is and let me tell you, these are small, but if you spill one, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to feel like you spilled a gallon of paint. All right. And then let's see. Let's see if I can look at this one. All right. And then, and then get your other. And make sure you kind of keep a paper towel or just a towel close by. Um, just helps, uh, you know, work efficiently. And, okay, so I did glitter on that one, but on my, on my uh, shrines, I like to do um, just the stripes that just go and you know usually one little dip of paint should get you all the way across just like so and if you don't want to do stripes you can do dots but if you do the glitter I do recommend uh, do one side first and let it kind of dry and if you have like a blow dryer or a heat gun you can kind of just you know get it to heat all right so and if you want to do, you can, you know, you don't have to do the stripes. You can do like dots if you want to do dots, just or do dots and spots. If you want to do the glitter, you can. Just remember, um, do one side at a time if you do the glue because it will run on you. All right, so now we're going to do your wings. We're going to let this set for just a little bit. And I'm going to set this over here for a second. But this is so much fun and it's not that hard to do. I actually use the tip of the paintbrush right here. And so everything that comes in your kit um, is what I've used right here. You don't necessarily have to do it uh, vertical. You can go horizontal if you want. I just did mine vertical. Um, but anyways, uh, okay, so you probably ended up with some of this made of metal, I think is what it's called. Yeah. It's really super simple. You just cut, you know, you can use any scissors. I'm using, I think, pair of toss away scissors for my kids but it'll cut through the metal pretty easy um one little thing you know i it's pretty safe i uh, you just use caution either way you know you can see how easy it is to uh cut and make a lot of noise so what i did and you you can use this if you're going to go sideways okay so if you have a needle tool or even the tip of your paintbrush you can just kind of apply some pressure just where you get that little dent that just goes in. And then you'll have a little dent right there. And you can also use a Sharpie. The only thing with a Sharpie is that if you use a Sharpie, make sure you use the other side. Anyways, um, one other thing, if you decide to do it this way and you want kind of like that little loop right on the edges right here, so just to kind of, or unless you're gonna do roses, you can do that too. And the way I do it, if you have like another little round thing you can just kind of corner it and just eyeball it and remember this doesn't have to be perfect you're just having fun with it and that's the most important thing remember you know day of the dead is a festival and there is no correct way to do this maybe there is but you know it's your piece like i said as long as you're happy with it that's all that matters um and then you will just take your scissors and you'll go around it just like so anyways there you go and then they'll provide you, I'm going to make a template and that way if you don't want to do all the swirlies and you just want to trace them, um, we'll provide that for you and we'll get some tracing paper too so you can just trace them on there. That's cool. But if you want to just, you know, freehand it, that's cool too. Um, but it's pretty easy to, what I did, and you just use the tip of your paintbrush, you'll just 
push down, you get like a postcard or a note, uh, like a spiral or whatever, just something that just, just gives you a little bit of cushion. You don't need a whole lot. And you will just start to emboss it. And you'll, I like to go, kind of go around the edge up here. And you want to apply pretty good pressure. You're not, you won't cut into it. It's, pre, it's very, it's pretty durable. You're putting enough pressure the way you're creating that line right there. And I'll do another one real quick. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it however you want to do it. If you want to put like a little banner at the top and emboss that too, you can. But I'm just doing this as a quick example. Just like so. And then when you flip it over, you've got this really cool emboss action going. And then you'll just keep going. And if it doesn't, if it hasn't punctured out or, you know, made that and, and if it's, the embossing part's not high enough, just flip it back over and go back over it again with your with your paintbrush. That will go up on top, just like so. And the side that you cut, the more um, straighter side, I suppose, that's going to be the side that you want to use to go on the inside, this part right here. So that, you know, because it should be straight, in theory, as they say. Um, let's see. Oh, here they are. Okay, and what we'll also do is we'll provide you with um, the little wing sides. That way you guys have like a, like a template to go. When it comes to doing like, you know, these really cool embossing things, if you have like a pattern or a saying or whatever, just have some fun with it. You know, if you want to put a cool banner that says Viva La Vida or the name of your pet or whatever, you can do that too. You can paint on these. You can get a Sharpie marker and mark on them. You know, have some fun with it. Play around with it, you know. Um, see what you come with. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. It's going to be cool. If you want to do a, I just saw this. If you want to do, um, like you see like the embossed hearts. If you want to do like a trace out a heart and do one of these and have your flames come up. You can do that too. That's a really cool idea. You know, there's so many really fun ideas you can do with these. And these are a lot of fun to do. And it's so relaxing too. You know, it's a good way to spend a nice little quarantine afternoon on a Saturday. I'll show you how to do these roses. I did these really cool little roses and they're super easy. Some people will go and make the individual uh, petals and I have yet to do that. I heard it's pretty easy, but I, I'm i just, I don't know. I haven't made the time to actually find them. Um, let's, let's just put all these right here. And I like to kind of keep little dishes around so you can just put your little, so your stuff won't run off with it from you. Um, but anyways, this plastic is really easy to work with. It doesn't dry out, so if you leave it out overnight, that's okay. You can come back to it. This is pretty, this is very user friendly. Um, just use your needle, you can use your needle tool, you can butter knife, whatever you got laying around. And um, you're just gonna take your fingers and you're just gonna spread it out just like so. And it doesn't have, if it fits a little, you know, curvy, that's okay. You know, it just goes with flowers. And you wanna make them. You want to push it down, make it a little thin, not super thin, because when you roll it, you don't want it to crack or break apart. And if it breaks apart, that's okay too, because you can push them back together, push those parts back together. But you will just kind of, towards a little trans, you can see your finger behind it. And, and what I do, and kind of cut it down the center, just like so. And then you'll just start rolling it. It's kind of like a taco or a burrito or whatever. And you'll just, and you want to kind of just push in a little bit, just like kind of give it that little oomph that roses have, just like so. And that kind of, and if it does that, that's okay. You can just kind of push it back and use your finger to kind of, yep, just like so. There you go. And then you just kind of keep making them over and over. And then you can just snap this bottom part off with your butter knife and then just reuse that for another rose. And that's how you'll do your little roses. And, you know, then you can fix them and all that. And then for your little skull dude here, just get a little bit as well. You don't need a whole lot. And I am I was going to put mine just like so. But you'll just kind of roll it in your hands. Uh, you'll make it look like an egg, just like a little egg shape. And you don't have to have a perfect skull. That's okay. 
you can take your finger and just kind of push right at the base. This is like the base of the skull in the back, just like so. Just make sure you don't, you know, you just want to support right there. And you'll just kind of do that bit and you'll come to the front and you'll kind of just keep that little egg shape, keep a little base down there. It doesn't have to be exact. You can make it however you want to kind of flatten the top part just a little bit, not real bad. Still got an egg head. And then you can take the booty of your paintbrush and you'll just make the eyes just like so. And I've got like a psychedelic one going on right here because it's got some clay in it. And then you'll just take your needle tool or a pencil or a pen and you can just do like the little nose. Of course, mine's a little, little on the wonk side. And then if you want to, you can put a little rose on there. If you want to make hat, a hat for them, you can do any of that. If you want to go and you know, make teeth on there, you can. You'll just use your needle tool and kind of go across just like so. And if you know how to do this, you can do it just like so. And you can do your little, your little teeth action and all that good stuff. Let's see. And like I said, if you have um, really, if you have like just any fun things laying about, you can add those to them. Of course, I'm going to paint on myself. On the back side, I just went ahead and painted it green all the way around. And a long time ago, I used to, when I first started doing these, I would get super detailed and actually come back out here on the outside and start doing my designs. But then just because I thought it was really cool, but then I thought, oh, you know, all the actions in here, you know, back here, you just need some color. And stuff. So if you want to get your uh, other color, you can do something fun and just ooh, a little swirly on it. And then come back around this way. Just so that when it's hanging on your wall or sitting on your desk or your shelf and you're walking by it, you've got some pretty fun things going on in the back. If you want to decoupage it, you can. If you want to put cool, if you want to put roses all over it, put roses on it. You know, that would be kind of cool all the way around it, you know. And these cool things with these roses too. Um, one of the things, these would actually be some of your finishing. They want to put in the middle of it. Okay, so... Here are some options. The way I did the one in the museum is I took the photo corners and I just put them in the corner right here. And you can take a picture of your loved one if you want to do that and just set it inside those photo corners. You can do that. And then you can also just decorate around it. You know, you've got this little really cool shelf right here that you can put your little photo of if you want to. Or you can, this was my other little option. Um, if you want to make like a full skeleton and have them hang right here, like actually do the whole body you can do that um and then you can take some of those little eye hooks and you can screw them in i would probably do three if i was that's just me though um but screw a little eye hook in there and run some string through your skeleton and i didn't really show how to do the bod it's pretty easy don't make it don't make it hard make it super simple um but you can do that too you can hang these little guys right here in the center um if you have uh like a doll <laughs> If you have a doll hanging around that's going to fit inside here, you could take the head off the doll and attach it to this guy, and that's something fun to do. Um, but yeah, you can have as much fun as you want to with the insides. If you want, if you find a design that you really like, like, like if you find a shape that you like a lot that you want to use on the outside, or even for this, you can trace it. Use your carbon paper to trace it onto a piece of paper, and then you can use that to put it on here. You can just draw a straight line just like so. But anyways, but that is your pattern. And then you can transfer this. If you want to do something on the side, that would be really cool too. Like if you don't want to just do like a solid color, do it like that, you know? Let's see how that works. Yeah, there you go. You can transfer it onto your wood. So if there's anything specific that you want, like a certain, like say there's something off of a piece of fabric, you like to trim on it, use your, your um, tracing paper and get that pattern off of there and then just trace it onto your box and then just go back and paint it. So you can do that too if you want to get really, really intricate with your pieces, especially if it's going to be like a gift or something or it's just because for you, whatever, that works too. Um, if you use this on top of your metal, um, Say you use your tracing paper to get a design, you'll get your design traced out. 
just put it directly on there. You don't have to use your tracing paper and just put enough pressure down that it actually will emboss onto your, onto your uh, metal. ink everywhere okay yeah and then you can kind of see where it embossed a little bit so then you can go back and you can trace it on there and then kind of redefine it with your paintbrush tip